Hey, happy Friday. Terry Colley, you know, dedicated managers. Just want to kind of pull some things together from this Auth0 um, series I've been doing. I wanted to show a diagram here that we created for a client. It's pretty uh, abstract here. Not a lot of things filled in, but it's a high-level diagram where I wanted to kind of show what I was talking about when I talked about the service layer versus your, um, your front-end UI, user interface. So really what we care about in this diagram are, uh, are four things. We care about the user. This is the web browser. This is Auth0. This is Vue.js. This is the code we're writing over here. And this is uh, the service layer back end. And, and in this instance, we're using a .NET Core service layer. Um, this is kind of a development environment that we have going. We have, um, this is kind of filling in some more details. We have a, this is a server here, a single server. This EC2 Linux server is this thing and is running these two uh, components. This is, a, this is a web server and this is Vue.js. It's actually running off of Apache. Apache is serving up just the static Vue.js files. And then we're going through a load balancer here. This is Amazon, if you haven't figured that out already. It's Amazon Web Services. And, and this is a load balancer here that's in front of our server so that we can distribute the, the load to various um, instances, micro instances, so we could we could replicate this server. We'd probably actually in production just have this Vue.js on its own EC2 server. It would just be by itself and then we could replicate it as many times as we want and point to each one from the load balancer. That's what this is showing you. Um, that we can serve it up from anything so that if we get a high volume, you know, it can come from any one of those servers. Same here. We can load balance to the, the services layer and um, and and hit you know various services layer because the service layer doesn't contain the information. The service layer actually talks to uh, an Elasticsearch database um, and a DynamoDB database. So the the service layer is kind of the the passageway to get to the data um, in your application or in this style of application that I've kind of been building for you. So let's walk through here real quick. Um, the user you know will request go to www.yourwebsite.com and that's going to be this path right here through this load balancer and it's going to get the Vue.js code back to the browser. And so then that browser is going to be able to display the stuff that we were showing, the login button, the logout button, um, you know, all that stuff, but it can't get information about the user. It has to go through the services layer. So you'll make an Axios um, call, which I might show in another video if somebody comments and says, hey, what's an Axios call or what's an asynchronous call? Um, the JavaScript is going to make an asynchronous call, which means it doesn't have to load the web page, reload the web page. It's just going to load the data into the web page. So it's going to make an asynchronous call to your, your services layer, which is this call here, where it's going to come through and, and make a call to your um, your, you know, your, your services layer. We're running our API services layer in, in .NET Core. And so .NET Core will go and get the information about the user or whatever it needs to find, um, you know, um, you know how many how many widgets of an item that this guy bought or what is this guy's stream activity or um, you know anything that that this user did. If it was Facebook, you know, it might be all of their posts, um, you know, each one of your posts or, or one of your comments. All that stuff is stored in a database somewhere. Um, so that would be pulled back through and shown to the user. So in those videos, when I was talking about the services layer, um, that's this component right here. And so the services layer is going to receive a token from you and then verify that token against Auth0 before going and getting the data and sending it back to you. So when you originally sign in, or when the user originally signs in, they pull that that um, Vue.js code from your main website and that shows them the UI. Um, when they log in, you're taken over to Vue.js or to Auth0, I'm sorry, you're taken over to Auth0, Auth0 authenticates you and then puts a token, a cookie, a token, can be local storage or you can start in token. We start, start it in local storage. Um, could be local storage or a cookie um, where you store it on the user's browser. We stored it in local storage. You saw that I think in the last video. Um, and so that token that's received after authentication is then passed to the service layer here um, when, when you make an API call this way. And this is made to another you know, domain API dash or API.yourdomain.com can be this route. Um, and again, 
it's making an asynchronous call via JavaScript. The user isn't seeing that happen. The user seeing the UI load and then the data goes out and then all of a sudden the data populates within the, um, within the, the UI for the user. So the user sending or the JavaScript from Vue.js is sending that, that token to the .NET Core service. The .NET Core service verifies that auth zero token is legitimate and then goes and gets the data and sends it back. So that's your, your second path for your security and how what we were showing, what I've been building has only been this part right here. I haven't shown, um, I haven't shown anything else yet, just this part right here. All right, so uh, I just stopped to uh, answer the phone, so I don't remember what I was talking about, um, but hopefully uh, this video has been clear and somewhat understandable. Again, um, you know, we've been talking about this path here with this diagram, this path, and then the user authentic auth authorizing, um, auth authenticating to Auth0. Um, we've been talking about this type of stuff here. And uh, the next thing is really here. This is where you the stream to get your data through an asynchronous JavaScript call uh, with that token. So hopefully that was all pretty understandable. Again, Terry Caliendo, dedicated managers, hit that subscribe button, follow us. I'm going to try and come out with videos um, more often every week, some, at least something every week like this on a Friday, just, just pumping something out. And if you need any help, if you've got uh, any extra project work that you're looking for help with or you've got over, overload, Dedicated Managers is here to help you. Or even if you're a programmer looking for work, we sometimes have uh, extra, um, uh, extra work. So if you're a freelance um, programmer, shoot us a message so that we've got your name and, and can, uh, can uh, contract you out if we've got some extra work for you. All right, Terry Colliano, Dedicated Managers. Take care. Have a great day. It's Easter for us. Going to have an Easter weekend. I might actually take the weekend off. So I'm going to enjoy it. I hope you do too. Happy Easter.